on the brig. Mm. He's <laughs> not a support, right? <laughs> yeah, Trisphere is a Zenyatta player, so uh, Trisphere probably waking up out of bed as well as he's in right. Europe, I believe. So he's going to rub the crust out of his eyes. Crusty, very good coach, by the way. Um, <laughs> and Square One are going to come out of here with Brig Trisphere. Yep, so it's Big All who has been suffering from some internet issues. Trisphere is going to take up the mantle. Atlanta Academy running something that's getting more and more popular these days, a Tracer. Saucy on the Tracer, sugar free with the bird of prey in the air. He's so good at this far out, man. I just remember him doming fools on Hanamura last season. It feels so good to see that happen. Is Square One going to swap to their own DPS look? So Remember what we talked about Logix. Wub wants to be the next Logix in contenders. And another big space that we have to fill is who's going to be the best Farah. That was obviously Mangachu for a very long time. And now that Mangachu's an owl, much deserved. So proud of that. Someone else could definitely take that mantle. Sugar Free is someone who could be that Farah. But as of right now, it's not representing who that Farah needs to be during these games. As there is going to be a red that's going to give Atlanta Academy that extra numbers advantage and is going to give them the ability to take the objective. Even though Square One have already taken it, Atlanta can have like a ton of points. So they're going to have to wait until they take Square One out. Yeah, but so far Square One's calling this out really well. They're still rotating members, but that Hog and Frog both in the ground, courtesy of Sugar Free, who now has that barrage. Square One will well, once again flip the point. And this is, you know, what's really difficult when you're running in a recent against the ball comp. You can take the point for a moment, but especially when you're working against this kind of ultimate disadvantage, you're going to just die really quickly and flip that point, you know, just as quickly as oh. you took it. So gotta be thinking peripherally. Everybody's so incredibly squirrely from Atlanta Academy. They're not gonna be playing too bad with the the Gator gonna drop the proximity mines followed up by a pile drive that's gonna keep Tri Spear out of this game, especially when you're colored purple with that biotic grenade from Kodak, our ringer pretty much from Atlanta Rain. He is full time with Atlanta Academy, however, this season in contenders. And they're gonna find themselves on top once more. So far, outside of just the switch that Square One had based on positioning of Atlanta Academy, Atlanta Academy's been patrolled. Oh yeah, and they have plenty of tools, even if the pure mechanics of their players don't hold them back. Square One now have to make, again, a very difficult engage here. They're so vulnerable and obvious when they try and get towards the point that Atlanta Academy can just pepper in tons of damage before at range. Yep, these wall hacks from Adub, the infrared sites, are actually going to be very, very good for them. As it's going to, they're going to know where Sugar Free is and Gator and Hawk, most importantly, on this Sombra. Tracer are going to find that opening kill on that Roadhog. A bunch of people are hacked though on Square One following Hawk's EFP, but that could have been worse for Square One who found themselves still competing in this fight. The proximity mines are going to be really hard to avoid if you're right in the middle of them. Pulse nice. bomb. Yep, pulse bomb is going. Hot feet, gonna find a kill with that self destruct. Atlanta Academy is still on the point. And Square One now running out of options. Overtime means they gotta keep a body on the point at all times, but the sound barrier only hits the baby diva and Angelic himself. He's not long for this world. And man alive, I just love watching these tricks. <laughs> Easiest leap dart of Kodak's life in that situation. When most of your screen is covered by a character, you're going to go ahead and get that sleep in. Is Saucy going to go ahead and do a little bit of, you know, tactical crouching on the Overwatch logo? I don't know what that means. He's Speaking of lore. Name, right? yeah, you know, keeping it staying spicy. a little saucy. And so they're going to go up 1-0 against Square One here on Control. I like seeing Tracer. I like seeing the Ana. One Tracer was doing a little bit, you know, of work, and that was on Atlanta Academy. Saucy, it's so interesting to see the Tracer and the Sombra on the same team because they function in a very similar way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tracer, though, does do a bit more pure damage. Uh, her utility is in being able to, you know, have the mobility to put in that damage. Whereas, you know, Sombras, even if you don't have the best aim in the world, one of the reasons why you know, Flex tank players can easily pick up Sombra is that the large majority of her utility is in her EMP and hacks. So it's very interchangeable, both highly mobile. Atlanta Academy now running Kodak on the Moira. Really interesting. Are they expecting a Sombra from the other side? Atlanta Academy are going to go ahead and aggress onto Square One to start things off here on Sanctuary. Square One seems to have stabilized just a little bit, but Atlanta Academy have been pretty healthy. And Kodak on the Moira is a look we haven't seen all day today. Gator going to get hooked. He's going to stay alive. That's why when there's a Roadhog on the other side, it's nice to have a D.Va. And Hawk is 
arguably one of the better divas we have here in contenders. And so they're going to get that first catch. It took a while, but Atlanta Academy finds themselves on top. Yeah, and I love the aggression from Atlanta Academy. This is a team just like Grunto Esports that is known for its explosivity. And you can never count this team out. And even with as strange of a pick as the Moira, tons of burst healing, they just sneak you straight on top of square one. We're certainly not expecting a melee range battle running a region. And the rally is going to start things off for Atlanta Academy. They're trying their best to keep square one from leaving spawn at this point in time. It's going to be a little bit easier for square one to leave if Hot Date keeps getting picks like he just did against. Gator, who did not use Primal Rage, maybe was feeling a little confident, but it's going to take so long for Square One to get to the objective. Atlanta Academy has to survive. Oh, yeah, and he doesn't even, yo, man, I didn't even want a Primal. Could have swapped to the Reinhardt here so you can face off toe to toe with Joel. A Gallic ready with the sound barrier, but at the beginning, Square One have yet to win this game. Go. ENT goes through. Three members are hack sound barrier. Doesn't hit everybody in that situation either. Hot Day going to be losing some because he's self destructive at the same time. So Angelic only getting three members with the overshield for his sound barrier. So Atlanta Academy feeling pretty good. They're approaching 60%. They're going to get an old fashioned kill with Hawk getting Tri-Steer on the brick. Remember, that is an off throw. You got to give him a little bit of leeway on that one as Atlanta Academy are coming up on some ultimates. Coalesce and sound barrier are going to be available for them. And the rally is going to be as well. Who needs the EMP when you've got everything else? Exactly. Square one right now looking for some kind of way outside of the kills that Hot Date has been in this group against Atlanta Academy. Hawk right now just BMing a little bit. Square one do have some tools, but it hasn't been their ultimate economy that has been giving them trouble. Absolutely the fact that they die every time they engage. The ENP goes through soft, you gonna find a ton of dice. So is Gator. When was the last time you saw a triple fire strike kill that happens all at once? Is Atlanta Academy gonna stunt on square one here on Sanctuary? Man, you got the Diva emote going on in your head. You've got Tri Spear on Brig. If you're know, square right? one, really, it's so hard to stay in a game like this, but they were definitely going for it, right? And yeah. unfortunately, Atlanta Academy is maybe the best at going for it. So they're going up against a team that I think counters them pretty well just in general, mm -hmm. anyway. And now that they have all these subs and these issues, getting a player in super late, it's going to be hard for square one to come back from it. But, you know, you never know. Things can happen. Atlanta Academy could get overconfident. You never know. It's not really their style to do that, but it could happen. I would argue that it's absolutely Atlanta Academy's style to get overconfident at times. I mean, I'm just thinking about like the Orisa Bastion look on Hanamura. Granted, that was three seasons ago. But uh, so so it's definitely possible. But I think Atlanta Academy are just going to be playing like a pretty excellent game. And Square One are the ones who are going to have to kind of raise themselves out of that funk to, to, if nothing else, be able to look for those opportunities and be ready if Atlanta Academy ever does get a little too comfortable. I think they're going to have to hope for that lull, right? Mm -hmm. You got to be that, you know, honey badger. That, exactly. that, that, I don't like, know oh, if honey no. badgers do that. I was apparently not very good at science, uh, but <laughs> or animals. Um, but anyway, um, the thing about it is they have to look at Atlanta Academy and, and not let them be that monolithic structure that you see from, you know, the, the Washington Monument from a mile away, mm -hmm. the Arc de Triomphe, you know, in France. It's so it's there, right? It's immovable. And Atlanta Academy and Team Envy on the other side and another group can represent those types of feelings and what teams need to do, even though like it's it's hard to get yourself in that kind of mind space. They have to go into these matchups. I can win this fight thinking that they can win, right? Exactly. I think being overconfident can be a detriment if they're like, we're going to win against Atlanta Academy. You also have to be realistic, but you have to put, you have to set out goals for yourself. And I think for this game, Square One needs to play a couple of these maps close. In this situation, I think that's what they need to come out of this with some positivity. Exactly. And that'll certainly help them, you know, overall as well into, you know, week four, five, six. And, you know, this is certainly really unfortunate. Hopefully those ISP issues will be resolved soon. But, you know, even if it's not like it's it's not just about um you know winning everything outright right mm -hmm. did i learn from this did we come out this of this you know better did we figure out you know what some of our weaknesses might be that's still a win because while it is week three the season's not over yet and square one is a quality team so volskaya industries will be our next map and atlanta you know have a pretty good record right here <laughs> atlanta is arguably the best team in contenders at assault uh, has been ever since they were here three seasons ago mm -hmm. uh they've always made you know 
they were in the fourth place game or third, fourth place game last season after playoffs. So they've been at least the finals and every contenders that they've been a part of so far. They did, you know, they, they beat British Hurricane uh, at the hey. gauntlet. I think some of you guys forgot about that and I need to remind you all. Um, <laughs> but and and that gave us our last, you know, our fourth spot. Uh, pretty much Atlanta Academy taking that spot away from Europe. So they've got what it takes to function at the highest oh, levels. But once they were, you know, attacked by angry Titans, right? Once they, you know, potentially could have gone against NV or Fusion University, I think Atlanta Academy is the line between those teams. I would agree. Kodak gonna give the Moira yet another look. Maybe maybe he heard you talking about Talon, and that's why he wants to give this a go. Also a good hero against a Sombra if you're expecting that to happen. And Bird just gonna teleport his team onto the high ground here and take a look see. No Ana on Atlanta Academy's side. So that means even if Square One don't swap Hot Date onto the Diva, you're not gonna be too afraid of bio nades or sleep darts coming your way. But it looks like Square One gonna stick with that Sombra look, at least for now. Nope. There we go. We've been debate so much. This is amazing. Moira's very like good against Sombra. Yep. Just, uh, just in general, a lot of the time, you'll see Moira, um, before Anna became that person, it was Moira who was there. He could keep the Sombra out of stealth just by holding right click. There's ways to harass the Sombra. And you can handle yourself, which is like a big deal when it comes to the four players. That's why Lucio is so good. You can do your own thing and contribute to your team at the same time and heal and support and then get coalescence and potentially drag out as well. Also, one of the best FFAs out there. Moira, you're good in my book. Square one now. Going to start things off here on the attack. So far, Dub is going to fall to 6v5 for Atlanta Academy. And looking at this Moira already at the coalescence, that's really, really good. But Sugar 3 also very close to the rally. Yep, and Square One themselves will have some ultimates for this next fight, but just having the tools is very different from using them effectively. Square One do seem just a little bit bamboozled. A Brigida, you know, even though she is kind of expected, she's kind of like, you know, the vanilla flavor of all ice cream flavors. She's a big part of a well-oiled goat machine, so Square One do need to start to use these from Ice Cream here, who is going to pop the rally immediately. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Oath. Briggs are going to ult at the same exact time, so the Rally Armor will defeat at the same time. That's actually going to give both teams good timing on when a good time to attack the objective would be. Is Atlanta Academy going to go ahead and throw out that grab? Bird has that counter trance. Gator, oh my goodness, the magnetism on these Reinhardt. Jolt's going to use the shatter, but Jolt is going to get shattered as well. Jolt Hot Date Dub going to fall onto the ground. One of those falls that is Dub's. We're going to pin off of the map. Love it and these Reinhardts take some people down with them. You're going to die anyway. Why right, not take the Moira away as well, even though you're probably going to switch that Moira on this next, you know, if they were attacking, right? But they're going to go ahead and switch it anyway. Should have just gone with it. Square one now. Going to have to try to attack again. Yep. You do have a lot more fragging ability as Zenyatta, so you might as well. You're not going to be worried about getting hacked since Square One isn't running a Sombra. Hawk, please, are you Mickey? I'd love to spam the voice lines. But Square One, you have a pretty good shot here. Again, Atlanta Academy can get overly comfortable. Once you reach that breaking point in terms of ultimate, Square One could still take this fight, even though they are functioning with a brand new Brigida. Hawk, is this easy mode? You gotta let us know. You can't just ask the question. The burden of proof is on you, my friend. Exactly. So make this easy mode for your team. Hawk has a little special thing with Hammonite. He's able to get three kills on a bomb. Let's see if he's gonna be able to do it. And you're gonna have to protect your ears. Is Dove gonna get his grab eaten? Hawk, so good. Self-destruct comes through. No kills. It's the easy mode if you're ulting me gonna be easy to eat it as Hot Day also gonna be going back to spawn. 43 seconds left for square one to make something happen here on point A. Oh, and it's looking less and less likely, Saucy knowing that this grab will be free for just use the transcendence. So no point in risking a quick retake through some kind of miracle if Square One can't get out of their doors, even Gator's ready to shatter them. And they're gonna stay up close for the time being. We actually saw Revival try to do this. I think a week ago, and they got stomped because of that. Earth Shatter gonna come out of the spawn. Jolto gonna get stunned right after Kodak using that transcendence to keep everyone alive. And Atlanta Academy's confidence net right now might be the death of them. But actually, no, it won't. Kodak is gonna get that hit. And even if they break away here, will anyone be on the point? Yes, they know someone is tapping the point right now, and they're gonna give square one at least 
to take the square one actually have a win condition going into this next round. That's some good heads up stuff. They knew whoever was on the point knew it was probably angelic that they were going to get stopped there. And 43.4% for square one. That's desperation right there. And it worked out a little bit. They have yeah. a win condition. It did, they did get something they don't have to hang on to just a tick. So that's something to look forward to to for square one but they are getting quite bamboozled and beaten around by atlanta academy who are completely happy to take advantage of an essential six v five and a half i would say uh so square one do need to hold atlanta academy back and curious if hawk is going to get some of those big bombs it has it's been like three seasons since we've seen them he used to get these massive bombs made like two three four kills in season even. one it was a lot in of triple kills one, tons of triple kills so we'll see We're got used to the double sick. kills yeah, last exactly. season you know, double he's, kill though is just he's flexing on some sombra as yeah. well so the opportunities for those don't you know right. appear as much as they do for manatin for example and so manatin definitely one of the divas that have maintained their ability to get these self-destruct kills because it used to be grav transcendence self-destruct you know and that just used to be how goats was every single time but these demons have had to adjust recently exactly even if you're not using the bishu bomb style pushing it off a ledge you can still find quite a few kills salty and pika actually two names that stand out in terms of their ability to find solo kills here and there square one with dove on the somber this time around Always good to practice that Sombra as she is coming more and more into the meta and essentially becoming standard in contenders. So you have to be able to wield her with FPS. Love it. Ham Tornado, Atlanta Academy, and Square One are going to see each other again here on point A. We're not going to see the rest of the sky as Square One only able to get 43.4% on the clock. That's because they were spawn camped and Lucio got to run away and get onto the point, forcing Atlanta Academy to come in with access. Square One, do have that win condition, and Dub finding this early kill is going to keep things in sight for them to hold this defense. But any kills coming from Atlanta Academy are huge for Atlanta Academy to take this point. But Hot Day getting funny Astro means that this is probably going to be a fair. Just peppering in some damage in the air, but not a real engage for the time of being, though, as this Sombra, though, going to get bullied out. Yeah, and there's no Diva hot dates on Zarya, so nobody is going to be able to get into Sugar Free's face in the air and force him away. This is actually a really big play for Square One here. They're they're basically trusting that hot Day is going to do enough damage on this Zarya that they won't need a Diva, which they might be regretting at this point because Sugar Free is only 20% away from a barrage. Yeah, this barrage might be all that they need, especially since it's probably going to line up with the EMP here very shortly. Sugar Free going to get hit with a Fire Strike. Jolt is going to stay healthy, but the rest of his team is not. Sugar Free going to find that kill. Sugar Free is also going to be hacked in the air, so the Rocket Barrage is going to have to wait as he's going to land on the ground and still find some damage in the air. You've got Sugar Free. Atlanta Academy will be wrapping this up and moving up 2-0 in a lightning quick pace. Yep. Square One doing their best, just couldn't find enough frags quickly enough. Some good kills here and there, but you know, and Square One are going to have a hard time coming up against Atlanta given all of their circumstances today, but things like, for example, covering the res, right? Funny Astro went in and got a free res onto Sugar Free after a hard one battle with the Sombra. And those are kind of, you know, the small mistakes, not necessarily small mistakes, but kind of small heads up plays that you do need to always be keeping in mind as Mercy comes back into the meta. Uh, apparently, you also need to prepare against Reaper these days if, you know, Uprising Academy is anything to and go envy. with. And Envy, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that is going to be a pretty easy 2 and 0 for Atlanta. The map streak is alive. Remember, they are going for a perfect season. I believe the only team to be able to accomplish that is the Sydney Drop Bears, Bears over in Australia. Brazil Gaming House were they lost just one game during a season in South America a couple seasons ago, two or three seasons ago, before they became based tryhards. And so you've got Brazil Gaming House at that one loss. You've got Sydney Drop Bears. I think they might have done it twice, maybe. No, I'm making that up. They definitely got a perfect season, one season. And this season, Order beat them. So maybe like Order beating Drop Bears, right? Uh, Fury almost beat the Brazil Gaming House, uh, which is a, yeah, which is a team that hasn't that only lost their first South American contenders game two seasons ago after completely dominating South America yep. for 
seasons. They right? hadn't lost a game in like two years. Yep. And uh, the only team that had beaten them was uh, an old team called Karma, if you guys remember that back in the day. But enough about South America. The reason why I bring it up is because Fury and the rest of South America getting closer to the DGH. Order beat 70 drop bears in Australia. So I think this parody that we're seeing throughout you know, North American contenders is not just limited to us. I think almost every single region has become more competitive from Korea to America, East and West to South America to Pacific and also Australia. Yep, abs- undoubtedly. And I mean, even EU, right? Angry Titans taking over British Hurricane, a kind of upset that many people didn't expect well so. and a bunch of those teams just lost your europe is in a, a situation where no one's really you know leading the pack british hurricane are one or two mm-hmm. right now and so uh gaganti lost this week i believe so it's uh it's everyone can lose to everybody at this point a bit uh, of a power vacuum anybody can step up yeah maybe not in this game because of the situation i actually just saw on the twitter that square one tri spears internet was fixed and big all's internet was not so i wonder if bird was in for tri spear because tri <laughs> Spears internet didn't work and now that big all's internet doesn't work tri spears internet works now so now they're back in oh man it has been a huge switcheroo apparently eu has been working through some pretty major internet problems yep so we have entered the half atlanta academy we're up 2-0 against square one and their kind of makeshift team that they're running for this series we're going to come back after the half in six minutes and see what happens for the final game of the day we'll see you soon